coffee and writing and doing anything to think about except what the guy had been telling me but you know it had its effect it really had its effect you know because after that stage and this is something like I said I'd always been uncomfortable with but that was a big changing point in my life you could say it was an epiphany no one, if you're on a spiritual journey, a quest for truth, you wouldn't have thought of dreamed of looking at Islam. And I didn't. I looked at everything. So I reached this stage when I basically, I was, I was basically at this stage a hippie. Okay? So I was about now 20 years old, 19, 20 years old, I was a hippie. I had, by this stage, invented my own religion. Okay? This religion was bits and pieces of all the religions that I had studied and I took them all together and I made my own religion okay and so therefore I started to develop this philosophy of my own religion but it didn't take me long to figure that this was the worst bunch of rubbish that I'd ever come across right I mean of all the things I'd been through it was the worst and I said to myself forget it forget religion forget spirituality forget all this stuff maybe there's no meaning to life Maybe there's just nothing more to life than being rich. Maybe my problem was, is that I didn't have enough money. Now to show you what I'm thinking of in terms of the money I thought I would need to make me happy, I'm thinking here, yachts and private jets. That's the stage that I'm going to need to move up to, right? So you can imagine my lifestyle before that, okay? So I'm thinking to myself, money. Okay, let's go back to money. How do I make lots of money with very little effort? Because who wants to work hard? Who wants to spend all the time working? You want money and then you want to enjoy that money. So less work, more money, that's what we need. Maximum enjoyment. So I thought to myself, let's make a study of this. Let's start thinking about people who have got money in the world. Okay, and let's think about how they got their money. So I started thinking. I started thinking about Britain. Okay, lots of money there. No problem. But too much work. What, the Industrial Revolution? Oh, no way, you know. All those satanic mills and those dark mills and all that industrial, no, forget that. America? You know, the American dream. What is the American dream? You're in the gutter and you struggle. And it's the rat race and you make it and you're the self-made millionaire. I said, that is definitely too much hard work. The Japanese, they've got lots of money. But all they do is work. That's all they ever do. And in those days, they were well known, the Japanese, for being workaholics. And then it came to me. Those Saudi Arabians. They've been sitting on their camels. <laughs> going, Allahu Akbar. And they've got all this money. That's the one. That's it. Let me look at that. That's interesting. No effort, maximum money. There's got to be something there. So I said to myself, okay, let me think about it. Of course. Okay, what's their religion? Their book? Yeah, the Quran. Right. Let me have a look at this Quran. There's got to be something interesting there. And that, that is really what motivated me to go down to the bookshop. And I took a translation of the Quran. And you know what, I really believe it had to be like that way because I was really just approaching the Qur'an out of curiosity to see what it had to say. I was coming with an open mind, you know. I was not looking for truths, I was not looking for what, I was just curious to see what did this book have to say. Was there something there? That's all. Otherwise, I don't think I ever would have looked at it, okay. So I took it down and uh, began reading the Qur'an. Now, I'm a pretty fast reader. And I remember very clearly, I was in a train, I was going from where I was living, across the River Thames, okay, to Victoria train station. I remember very distinctly, I was sitting in the train, reading, I was sitting next to the window, reading this translation of the Qur'an. I looked out of the window, I looked back and I said to myself, if I have ever read a book that is from God, this is it. And that really I could say was the moment that I realized and I believe that the Quran was from God and uh, it was always my habit you know I didn't just read about things 
I try to practice them. You know, you can read and read and read, but you know, like they say, you can look at the orange all day long. It looks nice, it's pretty, it's orange, it smells nice, but you know, how does it taste? You have to taste it, right? Okay, so that was it. So I, I used to go home and I used to try and pray. I didn't really know how to pray. I remember seeing our cook in Egypt. I used to remember seeing him pray. So I sort of try to remember what he used to do. I remember it used to really impress me, this simple man and the beautiful way he used to pray and comparing it with the rituals in the Catholic Church. And I was always impressed by it. So there I was trying to imitate it. And this went on for a while. And then uh, one day, I won't go into the whole story. It's too, too long to go into it. But anyway, the, the short of it is I found myself in a bookshop that was part of a mosque. Okay? So I found myself in this bookshop, and all these books, and Muhammad, and Salah, and prayer, and then I was looking at all this, and wow, fantastic, look at all of this stuff. And a guy comes, and he says to me, excuse me, uh, are you a Muslim? And I'm thinking, am I a Muslim? What, is it? what does he mean by that? He said, listen, I said to him, I'll tell you, I believe there is only one God, which is Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. He said, you're a Muslim. I said, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's not, yeah. Oh, good. He said, look, we're just about to pray. Do you want to you come and pray? Now, it must have been Jummah. It must have been Jummah because you never see a mosque at midday. I, I mean, I didn't know about Jummah then, okay? But I went and I prayed and everyone was like, and I was sort of like, oh, what's going on? And I was, I've obviously got it wrong all this time, you know? And, you know, but I remember afterwards, you know, everyone was surrounding me. You know, and everyone there wanted to teach me the whole of Islam in five minutes. You know, I, I remember walking out of that feeling literally like I had been given a shower on the inside and like I was walking on clouds. It was quite fantastic. Now, actually, I would say that that's about two-thirds of my story. The, the other third, okay, we don't have time to go into it, maybe another time, okay? But very briefly, I would have to say that in spite of that being the time when I entered into Islam, it really took me another two years before I was really able to start practicing properly and you know it was really actually very hard to give up my former way of life you know and the things that I used to do but I, I you know Allah taught me some pretty hard lessons I don't regret them they're very you know I look back now and I learned some very good lessons from those days but you know they were the two most miserable years of my life why because I knew the truth and I wasn't following it actually that's the worst condition a human being can ever be in. You know, because if you're ignorant, you know they say ignorance is bliss. Actually, ignorance itself isn't bliss. But meaning when you don't know something, you're in a sort of state of innocence. But when you know something, and then you don't live according to what you know, you can't live with yourself. It's terrible. It's a horrible condition. And, and that's what happened to me for about two years. But alhamdulillah, you know, alhamdulillah, I came back to Islam, I came back to the deen. I never, I never used to say, I mean, I would always say that I'm Muslim. You know, I would always say that I was Muslim. I, people just didn't take me seriously. You know, there I was at parties and drinking wine. And, you know, I remember sometimes I was sitting at a party and sitting around people, telling people about Islam. And they'd be going, yeah, really, that's fantastic. Tell me more. And I said, oh, I'm just too gone. I'm just too, uh, you know, I've been drinking too much. Oh, I can't. And said, no, tell us, oh, 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 a blunk like that. that. That's my condition that I was in. But, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah woke me out of that. And, um, you know, then it happened like... Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me and I you know, came back round. And the, really the thing that changed me, brothers and sisters, was this. Really a simple thing. A very simple thing. I started to pray five times a day. You know, people say to me, Abdurrahim, what, you know, how can I... You know what? The prayer. If you do the prayer properly, if you really pray five... And I, that's what I said. I, I promised Allah that I will pray five times a day. I said, I don't know that if I can do anything else, but I will do that. And I took it really seriously. You know, I took it really, really, really seriously. Alhamdulillah, the prayer when it is said properly is something that itself will change your life. Now, I know you're going to ask me another question. And there's two questions you will ask me. So I'll answer them before you ask me. Right? Number one is, how does it feel to be a Muslim? And compared to how it was before. Now, I will tell you honestly how it is like. 
If I was to describe it, it would be like this. Imagine you live or imagine you find yourself in a building. And this building, like any building, is full of obstacles, chairs, tables, lamps, stairs. Imagine just even this room. If we made it pitch black, I mean so dark that you could not see a thing. Right? And we left you here and then we started mixing you all around and everyone had to think. Now imagine you try and find your way out. Imagine I try and find my way out. I'm going to bang myself, hit myself, fall over. You know, you're living in this dark place. This is like disbelief. This is like the state where you are out of Islam. You're in this dark place. You don't really know where you're going. You don't know where you've come from. And life is full of obstacles. It keeps throwing things at you. And you've got real no... You don't really know how to cope with them. Islam, it is really like you open the door and then you stepped outside and you were in the light. Suddenly you could see. Suddenly you could understand. Suddenly everything is clear. This is what it is like. Or you could also say it is like the difference between death and life. Between being really alive and being dead. Because this is Islam. It brings the light and the peace and the tranquility to the hearts. It is a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know? So this is how we could say how I could really compare um, Islam. And I know the other question is going to be, what did your parents say? And I have to say honestly that me and my parents, alhamdulillah, have a better relationship now that I'm Muslim than we ever had before. I mean, if you really were able to get them to be honest, right, and to tell them how they really feel, they would admit without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, the Islam has given me responsibility, it has ordered me to treat them with so much respect and they would have to admit that that Islam has been something that's good for me and also good for my relationship between me and them. So, you know, we get on, alhamdulillah, now really, really well, alhamdulillah. Okay, brothers and sisters, I hope I've covered most of the how do I come to Islam questions, okay? This video has made me realize that if a religion can challenge you to be the best version of yourself then i think you should appreciate that religion or even look into it because i'm thinking he was talking about how he was still drinking despite saying oh i'm, I'm a muslim but he was still going out and drinking and doing all sorts of things um it's like taking water with detonate or all sorts of toxic things in that water but once you eliminate that toxic part remove the debt or filter it remove the debt you have the pure water that you take it's pure it's like so when you take out all these um things that we consume that harm our bodies or harm us it's like we're purifying ourselves it's like we're saying uh-uh i'm not going to sin this way anymore we're purifying ourselves and that should mean something to us otherwise this was a beautiful video and i just loved it a uh, big shout out to the person that suggested it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.